Well, hello everyone, and, and welcome to the class. Um, this is the first of a series of videos that uh, I will be preparing uh, for our class. And this one is just a, a few remarks on uh, Blackburn's brief introduction to uh, to his work, Think, which is, uh, is our only text for this class. I will be making videos uh, weekly. Um, you know, it's just what what I do for online classes. Um, so, um, you know, if you get sick of seeing my face, uh, there's really no reason to uh, to not just use the audio. Uh, but the the idea is that, you know, this is an online class, so uh, we do not meet. We have our we have our weekly uh, audio discussions. Um, but that uh, teachers should make some effort uh, to to help. Um, students uh, read uh, the text more profitably. Um, I don't think this is a particularly difficult text. I chose it because I think it's very readable, very understandable, very good introduction to uh, to philosophy. Uh, so I think you could certainly read it on your own. I just feel like uh, maybe there's a remark I could make here or there that could help you a little bit uh, in your reading. Uh, so uh, I'll be doing that. Uh, here, I just want to make a few remarks uh, about uh, Blackburn's introduction to Think. Um, again, this is not a particularly difficult uh, reading. It, it's just that it may seem very vague, I, I think. Uh, that is, after you, reading, you read it, you may wonder what exactly the point was or what, what exactly he wanted to get across. And, and it's difficult. You know, introductions to philosophy are difficult, and introductions to introductions to philosophy are difficult. Um, it, it seems to me that that it, it's an old question in philosophy, you know, um, prefaces or introductions. You know, what, what what can they actually do, especially with regard to what I would call the first uh, question that Blackburn addresses. There's like really two questions here. The, the the first one is, you know, what what is philosophy, uh, and and what does it mean to be doing philosophy, and what is a philosophical as opposed to another kind of question, which is a very difficult thing. And the second is, you know, what's the point of philosophy? Uh, why study philosophy? What's what's the use of it? What what is, uh, you know, why should why should it be something that we think is important? And and really, the, the second question, in a way, is the the most difficult of all. But in, in another way, is is much easier to dispose of. And and we'll look at, uh, you, know, you you can see his really justifications for doing philosophy, for teaching philosophy, for studying philosophy. But I think the first question, what is philosophy, uh, is an incredibly difficult question. We, 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 we you know, the, the whole book is trying to get that across, right? So there's a, a you know, you really can't uh, say what philosophy is until the end. I mean, you, by, by exploring philosophical questions and so-called doing philosophy, we just sort of get a sense of it. So it's very difficult beforehand. To uh, to give a sense of what philosophy is, but but I think he, he he tries and he makes some good points, and at least we get you know some of the um, typical philosophical subjects right away: um, knowledge, reason, truth, mind, freedom, destiny, identity, God, goodness, justice. This is what he says in the very beginning of the introduction as typical philosophical themes, and he's 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 absolutely right. Um, so, and, and as he says, these are the big questions, man. You know, these are the these are the big issues um, that that philosophers sometimes, not all philosophers, but sometimes philosophers tackle the the, the very nature of knowledge. What does it mean to, to know something? Um, reason. Uh, what does it mean to to be rational? Um, is there something called uh, reason as a faculty of the human mind? What does it mean to reason? Uh, truth, mind, you know, uh, these are, you know, things that are, we get the message that these are big subjects, but uh, but we won't really uh, get a sense of, of, of why they are typical philosophical subjects until we look into them in detail, but at least we get a sense of, uh, you know, of uh, what sort of subject matter we'll be dealing with. Um, <coughs> I think he makes an interesting distinction in this introduction between philosophical questions having to do with ourselves, 
philosophical questions having to do with the world, and philosophical questions having to do with the relation between ourselves and the world. Uh, and I think that probably I, I would say that the, the 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 more interesting distinction, and the more, or I should say, the more valuable distinction is questions about the world, which let's say let's call them provisionally metaphysical questions, and uh, questions about the relation between ourselves and the world, and uh, I would uh, call them epistemological questions. Uh, the, the, the first sort of question, the question about the world, he gives an example of why is there something and not nothing. This is a typical metaphysical question. Uh, question about reality. Why does anything exist? Why, why, is, why is there a world or a universe or a reality there in the first place to be known? It's a, it's a rather uh, difficult question to even grasp how can we ask why there's something rather than nothing. I mean, it just seems like just the ultimate presupposition is that there is something. But there is a sense, you know, not just philosophically, but also scientifically, I think in terms of cosmology, uh, science of uh, the universe and the beginnings of the universe. Uh, you know, when we think about uh, current theories from physics about the Big Bang, um, the, the very existence of the physical universe seems to be somewhat arbitrary. We don't know why it exists. So that question ha has uh, some sense to it. But questions about the world, uh, let's say other questions about the world. Uh, what does the world consist of? Um, uh, what does reality consist of? Is reality, for instance, entirely material, that is, physical? Or is reality entirely non-physical? Let's, let's say is reality entirely made up of, uh, of ideas? Or is it some combination of both? Um, any any attempt to <coughs> answer the very basic questions about the structure and nature of reality, we, we would say, is a, a metaphysical question. Uh, questions of ourselves and the world is really questions uh, questions about knowledge. We we assume maybe not we assume, but we believe that the world is a certain way. Whether they're grand questions like what is the universe made of, or does it have a beginning in time, or are we alone in the universe? And very sort of uh, mundane questions like uh, when is the bus coming, or um, you know uh, who 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 wrote the Declaration of Independence? Questions like that. You know, the, uh, epistemology asks how how we know those things, or rather, can we justify? in any sort of complete way our claim to know anything about the world. So metaphysics really has to do with the nature of reality, trying to uncover the nature of reality. Uh, epistemology, which is, comes from the, uh, the Greek word um, for knowledge, episteme, is really about how we could possibly know that reality. Um, how we could possibly justify any claims to to have the truth ab about the world. Um, so, you know, and his question about you know ourselves, you know, what am I? What is consciousness? Could I survive bodily death? Those really are questions about the world too. But if we take ourselves to be part of the world, um, then you know they're they're questions about the world, but, but in a more sort of intimate and close to home way. If we take ourselves to be part of the world, we want to understand ourselves perhaps uh, before we even move on to understanding anything else about the world. Uh, so again, that's very general, but it gives you some sense in, in, in the way, maybe not what philosophy is, but how philosophy is sort of roughly divided between different sort of questions, questions about the nature of reality, Questions about ourselves, you know, like whether we have free will, um, whether uh, we are, whether our existence ends with our bodily death, questions like that. And also questions about our relation to the world in, in, insofar as we are knowers, like that, that is, how much, to, to what extent can we be confident uh, about our, what we take to be our knowledge of the world. Um, but what is a philosophical question? I mean, how does a philosophical question about these matters 
differ from a non-philosophical question? Uh, well, that's a that's a really good uh, question in itself. You know, what what is it that distinguishes a philosophical question? He he, he uses the word empirical here. Empirical means having to do with experience, and 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 <coughs> an empirical question is a question that we we, we may not know the answer to. Uh, however there are sort of well accepted procedures for finding that answer. For instance, an empirical question would be uh, uh, who is currently the President of the United States? That's an an a question whose answer we all know. But even if we didn't, there was ways that we could find out. Right? Through our experience, through research, there are well established ways we could determine who is currently in 2014 the President of the United States. That is not a philosophical question. Um, um, how many electrons are, does a hydrogen atom have? Right. Something that we feel like we know, you know, and, and even if we didn't, we could sort of find out by, you know, looking at the periodic table or something like that. And and, and that's a scientific question, which is not a philosophical question. It's a it's a question where we we have ways of finding out. Now there may be other uh, questions to which we don't have such easy answers. Uh, but are uh, not philosophical questions. Uh, for instance, um, I don't know. Uh, um, how many uh, people actually participated in the conspiracy to assassinate Julius Caesar? We don't really know that. I mean, we have some ideas about who the principals were, but um, you know that, that's something we we don't know and probably could ne never know. Uh, considering that we don't have really sources that would tell us, and it's in the past, but it doesn't count as a philosophical question because it may be an unanswerable question, but it, it, it's unanswerable because we don't have enough information. Now, philosophical questions, uh, I, I hesitate to say they're unanswerable, but but it's it, uh, it it's not even clear with philosophical questions how we would even find an answer. That is. There aren't well-established uh, methods or accepted ways of, uh, of answering a truly philosophical question. Uh, our author, Blackburn, says on page three, they, they meaning philosophical questions, uh, defy simple processes of solution as opposed to empirical questions where, you know, who, who's the president? L look it up. Um, is uh, light a wave phenomenon or a particle phenomenon? Well, you know, um, that may be in a way unanswerable, but there are reasons, you know, for believing both, and here's what the current research is, and maybe it'll resolve itself at a certain point in the future when we know more about light and physical laws of the universe, but it's not a philosophical question. Uh, philosophical questions are, let's say, uh, a, a typical philosophical question uh, an epistemological question, like, um, can I be sure that I know anything? Now, uh, there are sort of quite things that we're iffy about, that we think we know. There are things that we, we're, we're pretty certain that we know, and there, there are things that we're sure that we know. Once we begin to ask ourselves what the basis of, um, of any knowledge is, that is, uh, then things become complicated. Let me give you an example um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, our idea that we can know the truth about the world. Some philosophers would say that uh, we never know the world directly. We, we uh, The only thing we know directly is how the world seems to us or our perception of the world. And when we know something, we believe that our perception of the world or how it seems to us corresponds with the way the world really is, and that may be that may be true. But but how would we check, for instance? For instance, I I, I look at the world and, and I look at um, uh, something about the world, and it has a certain appearance to me, a certain seeming to me, and it would seem that my my representation of the world is correct if it matches up with the way the world actually is. But how would I actually ever know if it matched up with the way the world actually is? I mean, I can't compare my representation of things to the way the world actually is. So maybe one example of what would count as a kind of a philosophical question insofar as it's not really clear uh, how we would even begin to answer the question. 